Hi there, Phil from statisticsmentor.com here. So in the previous video, we're looking at an exercise on the sum of the distribution of sum of normal mole variables. And we answered question one. That was pretty easy. Now we're going to move on to question two, part A. So let's look at it. Consider the independent variables xi where each of these xi's are normally distributed mean mean of 0 and the variance of 4 and we've got 4 variables as xi goes from 1 to 4 solve for k in the probability of 3 times x1 plus 4 times x2 bigger than a number 5 is equal to k all right, so how do we think about this? It looks a bit strange, this question, as in unfamiliar, not strange. Right? All right, it's of the form that we've seen before in classes, the probability of a random variable x bigger than a number is equal to a probability. This number is given, we have to find the probability, and it's a bigger than sign, so we're looking for basically something. A is here, we're looking for the area in the tail. Okay? Except for in this case, the variable x isn't just a straightforward x, it's that lot. Okay? So why don't I just change this? Let's just call this y instead. So the idea to think about this is that we've got this new variable 3x1 plus 4x2 which is a mouthful but basically it's just a variable so let's call it y all right first thing to assess is what is the distribution of it because once we know the distribution of it we know which table we need to look up the probabilities all right well we're told that each of the xi's are normally distributed and that all means that the sum of normals is normal and also a linear combination of normals is normal. Now this is, is a linear combination of normals. So let's make this clear. Let y be 3x1 plus 4x2. Then since y is consists is made up of a linear combination of normals it itself is normal that's just the result so we have to find the mean of y and the variance of y and once we've done that we can write down the mean and the variance and then we can solve this in the usual way by standardizing and then using the normal table, standard normal tables. Okay, ready? So let's go. The expected value of y, the mean of y. I've done this up umpteen times. Expected value of left is equal to expected value of the right hand side. This pen, there's a delay in this pen today, it's half asleep. Okay. Take the expected value through the brackets. Noting that the numbers three and four are constants x and y x one and x two are normal normal and therefore are random. Now, what are the mean of what is the expected value of x one and x two? We're told in the question the mean, which goes here, is zero for each one. So it's three times zero plus four times zero zero done. So zero goes into the space. Next, the variance of y. Okay, take the variance of left, take the variance of the right hand side. Now, recall what the formula is for the variance of a linear combination of random variables. Okay, this look. 
uh, we're here except for we've got AB as well so our result is this one here but with a plus there so variance of AX plus BY is equal to blah 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 same as this except for it's got a plus here okay however the covariance is zero because the x size we're told they're independent independence implies that the covariance between the variables are zero so this will simply be the variance of not the variance of well yes okay let's do it that way the variance of 3 times x1 plus the variance of 4 times x2 plus 0 because the covariance is 0 this term here constant times a random variable constant comes out squared so that's 9 times the variance of x1 come on pen plus 4 comes out square it that's 16 times the variance of x2 okay now what's the variance of x1 and x2 the question we're told that each of the variance of each of the x's is 4 so we just put that in 9 times 4 plus 16 times 4 that comes to 100 so up here we can put 100 right so great that is what we want okay so this is where we're at that this question can be expressed in this form probability of y bigger than 5 equal to k where y is normally distributed mean of 0 and the variance of 100 and now you can recognize that this is in the standard or the kind of things that you, you've seen before so we just standardize it and look up the table right so it's everything you've seen before so standardizing you know how to standardize take the variable minus the mean divided by the standard deviation so this will become z bigger than 5 minus 0 over square root of 100 because that is the variance so there you go so it's half is equal to k and in a picture it would look something like this oops well not that's a bad drawing that's supposed to be a normal distribution it's centered what this is y you see this is y going along here for going to minus infinity to plus infinity this is centered around zero and a half we want that oh not y sorry z because it's now standardized okay it's standardized so now this has a mean of 0 and a variance of 1 and it's bigger than a half say so that is a half we want all that okay, you can see that the answer you're looking for is less than 0.5 i.e. 50% because it's it's not halfway through is it? it's not all it's not from zero onwards so use the table I don't need to tell you how to use the table K you will find just check verify it comes to about 0 0.31 check it okay good stuff Let's, we're done oh before we're done um, you go ahead and try B doing a similar kind of thing I've given you the answer there alright then you know you've got it